Well, it's actually not on local CI testing. Uh, hey, my name is Mikola, and I'm going to talk about BPFCI. Um, yeah, I got this sent to me uh, yesterday, um, so I made a few slides quickly. Um, so I'm going to go over BPFCI over the last uh, year since last LSFMM. Um, essentially, um, virtual work has been done in improving the speed. Um, we've had issues with the CI where We've been waiting on H390X uh, runners for a while, so it will take a long time to get build results and test results. Um, and there were four different steps on how we improved the, uh, the speed of the CI there, and I'm going to go over that. Um, so back in November 2023, uh, till then we were running build for every architectures at the same time. And once, once all builds were finished, then we were moving into test. The problem is the S390X uh, workers pool is pretty limited and, and uh, doesn't have much power. So these used to take longer. Um, so while x86 and ARM was done building the kernel in five minutes, we had to wait, let's say in the, in the case of that screenshot, 15 minutes at least for S390X to finish. And on top of that, what we don't see here is Maybe there were no more workers available, so we had to wait first to be able to get a worker available to start taking the, the slack. And we were getting end-to-end -end, um, build plus testing for all architecture in the two hours or something. Uh, th this number varied a lot, but it's fair to say at least a good hour and a half. Um, so what we did was essentially to change the logic on how we uh, process the, the builds. And now we build each architecture independently, and they're all independent workflows. So for people that did play a bit with GitHub uh, Actions, uh, you have a workflow that does a bunch of stuff. Now essentially we start four different workflows. Well, we start one workflow for each architecture slash compiler uh, versions, and each of them is independent. So as soon as one finishes building, then we move on to the testing. And the end result of that is now, um, it, when we were waiting 15 minutes or so for x86 and ARM to do the full build and testing um, work end to end, it's now say, saving a five minutes in the best case, the best case being when S390X workers were available. But we had cases where we were waiting an hour or so to be able to get a worker. And then in these cases, essentially, we will be getting results for x86 and ARM in over 10 minutes instead of hour. Um, another improvement that was done was to start cross-compiling S390X, um, BP, well, the kernel and the, and the self-test. Um, and these resulted essentially in improving the time to build, because our x86 and ARM um, machines are pretty powerful. They are beefy, bare metal AWS machine running multiple containers. And here again, the build time for the S390X uh, went from 17 minutes plus to 7.5 for the P90. Um, and yeah, uh, the P99 now is 534 seconds, uh, while before the P1 was 516 seconds. Um, and you can see the graph on the, on the side that, that shows the difference in uh, build time. Um, and yeah, um, we build now an x86, which is you can send more money to it and have more machines and compile faster. Um, finally, another S390X optimization. Um, so if we looked at the test, remember before it was taking two hours something, and essentially one test, the test maps, uh, was taking an hour something for S390X. Um, Ilya from IBM has seen that could only reproduce this in the case of running our testing VMs on top of ZVM instead of KVM. Um, and you could see in a, in a flame graph that um, test map was spending a lot of time on log depth. So I disabled log step, log depth, and, um, and essentially we brought the testing, the test map from 15 minutes to five minutes. It's still enabled for the other architecture, so there is still some form of, uh, of testing. It's a trade-off to make between waiting hours or getting some decent amount of signal. 
And um, yeah, finally, uh, last month, Ilya was able to get us new runners that this time run KVM on top of KVM. Well, which run on KVM, so when we run a VM in it, it's KVM on top of KVM with nested I, um, virtualization. And now um, we essentially can run the test progs, the test maps, and stuff in five minutes. Um, so if there is a summary for this work, um, when end-to-end -end testing used to take two hours, something, or let's say more than one hour 30, it's now running in the 15 minutes. So you can get essentially your, the result of your build and testing in over 15 minutes. So that's a, a decent improvement. Um, another part of the work that was done was to move from our bespoke VMs uh, into uh, Daniel Xu's VM test. He presented about it last year at the last LSFMM. And essentially, before we used to download the rootfs, which we had to copy stuff inside um, and run the VM, extract stuff from the VM. We had a janky bash script to do this stuff. Um, now we're using VM test, which is essentially reusing the container's file system. Uh, and we don't have to deal with messing around and passing things right and left. It's much simpler. Um, it also removed a bunch of issues we had before where we were building on Ubuntu 20.04 and running, don't ask me why, uh, the VM was uh, based on a Debian Bullies uh, rootfs. And you could have cases where there were library versioning differences, so you will essentially have conflict between the, your build and, your, and, uh, and what was running in the VM. As a side effect of moving to VM tests, we actually squeezed a few flaky tests. Um, instead of running in its own image, it's now using the, the host file system through 9P. And um, a side effect of that was when a test forks, like, forks to call a command to do something, it takes longer than it used to to run. Um, you know, it needs to, to load it, and essentially this takes a bit longer. And one of the issues we had as we moved to VM tests, we started adding more tests failing. And it happens to be that in the test, we were using the ampersand greater than to redirect to dev null, which in bash means take std out and stdr and redirect it. But this is a bash thing, and Ubuntu and Debian run uh, use dash as a basic shell, and that doesn't do the same. Actually, it's just interpreted as going in the background. So what will happen is you will have your first command that will go in the background, and then the one that was supposed to run after will be kicking before, while the other one was still not running. And then you had a race between the two, and this was creating flakiness. So um, I believe with that change here, we did uh, squeeze a few flaky ones. And then a similar issue we had was with some network testing where we expect to set the network, send some packets using ping, and read those packets. Well, by the time we were kicking ping, and ping was sending packets, then ICMPv6 was sending its router solicitation stuff, um, and, and we were just not getting what, what we expected from the, from the test. So these um, issue that used to be flaky Surf were not as flaky anymore. They were actually breaking more often, and they, they were easier to troubleshoot and fix. And a few other things. Um, we also run various stats against uh, the uh, meta BPF objects, so we get a, a wider set of, um, of objects we use to verify uh, the verifier. Um, and we also build uh, a release build. Um, this, my understanding, the initial goal was to catch issues with initialized viable and such things that will usually go through the CI without any issue, and then later will break when, uh, when you were making a, a prod build. And yeah, that's it. Does anybody have any questions? Do you know like how's the integration going? I mean, I, I think Bjorn mentioned he wanted to also have Risk Five. Do you know like I don't know what, is there progress or? Um, so yeah, they reached out. Um, well, I guess in the end, 
it's really what do the BPF maintainer want. I think what we could do is probably cross-compile, um, but running tests will be dead slow. There is not okay. really anything. I think that they did check on some hardware they had or whatever to see if that could run in a decent amount of time, but my understanding is it will be dead slow, so I guess we go back to slide one. Mm. <laughs> And I mean, uh, yeah, I was wondering, given you had like this KVM and KVM, whether it could, could be similar for... Well, the, 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 so the, okay, I didn't mention that, but if you run the test in an emulating environment, it's game over. It's going to be too slow. It, VMs only work fine if they are fully virtualized, so if you run the VM the target architecture on which is the same than the host architecture. Anytime you go through um, a full emulation, it's super slow. I had run some benchmark, and actually I think I had better results running ARM64 VMs on the x86 machine than, um, than on an ARM64 with no uh, KVM expose or something like that. Um, so yeah. So I think it could be fine for small tests, but for the tests we have, it's just going to take a huge amount of time. Mm 